What's up designers? In this tutorial we are going to kind of go through some basic illustrator introductions here. Um, pulling a drawing from our sketchbook. This are, uh, these are drawings that you guys should recognize from our form drawing unit. Uh, doing a little bit of threshold vectorizing to them in Adobe Illustrator and then eventually uh, using the Bezier curve and shape builder tools uh, to do some hand coloring work. Now this tutorial will kind of compress a few days worth of classroom demonstrations all into one place. Uh, I've got somewhat sort of simplified versions of this drawing and then uh, a little bit more advanced versions of these. Uh, what I'm going to hope uh, hopefully kind of get you guys to land here at the end of this tutorial uh, would be uh, any level of complexity right that you're feeling comfortable with you want to challenge yourself go for it but uh, a finished single graphic uh, that has a basic color scheme added to it uh, in order to kind of pull all this off let's walk all the way back to sort of the beginning of where we're getting these images from and how we pull out just our black line work in your sketchbooks, uh, you should have um, a bunch of drawings, right? You know, all you have to do is kind of choose one that you really kind of like uh, and get a decent photograph of it. This doesn't even have to be all that high resolution of a scan. These could be, um, you know, taken with a smartphone or something like that. And if you want to get uh, a little bit better quality image, you can kind of black in some of your line work with a pencil. But uh, we shot most of these with a smartphone in class. Uh, and so that when we just sort of drag and drop them right into our Illustrator document, uh, they come in uh, and they're, you know, a reasonably good resolution. One of the first problems, though, that you find is that they're very, very big. And so if you're going to be working on a few of these things or you want to sort of just keep your workspace relatively clear, use the keyboard shortcut V, uh, your move tool or your selection tool. Hover over the corner of your photograph and just start shrinking down. Now, as you're shrinking, we don't want to distort the image too badly, so hold shift. Uh, holding shift will simultaneously sort of allow you to shrink the image and maintain its proportions so that if you're working on a few of these things, right, uh, we're not working that much larger than our final print destination size of about 8.5 by 11 inches or so. We can always change this document, but it's nice to, you know, keep things relatively small. Uh, after all, we only have, you know, this much workspace here. So to get this process started, I'll use this sort of curving shape here and then maybe occasionally jump out to use some more angular ones. I really like this one because it's it's going to add a little bit of complexity with some curving lines uh, so that not only do I have to sort of trace out some basic shapes, but I have to learn how to bend those lines as well. Uh, how do I get just these black lines isolated? Well, let's make a copy of your photograph. I always like to keep an original photograph somewhere close by. And uh, we'll go up to Window, way up on top of the screen. Come all the way down to Image Trace. Image Trace should pop up a little palette window uh, somewhere floating on the inside of your workspace. Uh, if I click on the photograph, I uh, should have the option to click preview and then image trace is going to warn me it's going to say well you know this is going to take a little while are you sure and as it kind of chews on that image uh, depending on the size of the photograph that you're using and the speed of your computer this could take a little while uh, I can either then increase or decrease the threshold uh, which is going to pull in more or less detail right so if your lighting is particularly bad you'll get these sort of wretched ghosting on the sides or if your pencil work is too fine right you might not actually get as much detail as you need hopefully uh, you know you can find some happy medium somewhere in the middle what you're looking for is the ability to sort of pull out your design from all the other ones now uh, if there's a lot of overlapping line work, a lot of black lines touching black lines, it uh, it may not work so well. Uh, so try to find a drawing that you know is somewhat isolated on the page. Uh, with this one, I was able to get a reasonably clean scan without too much of the uh, without too much of the black clouds sort of coming in on the sides. Uh, from here, I'm still not completely vector. I'm going to go to Object, Expand. And I'm just going to click OK through here just because uh, that prompt doesn't mean too much to us at this moment. And um, now that it's turned into vector, all I need to do is ungroup it. But before I do, let me just kind of go in and, and show you what's happened here, right? Not only is it sort of a black and white drawing of, you know, duotoned the image in a true threshold, but I've actually converted my image 
two vector points. Each one of these individual vector points, right, is an editable chunk of the photograph. This is totally different than, uh, say, for example, the raster photographs that I originally brought in. The raster photographs are pixel-based, right, these teeny tiny little blocks. Um, they're, you know, 256 levels of gray, and I can't control anything inside of them. They're, they're totally fixed. So converting to vector, um, you know, means that I did lose some detail. I don't exactly love the way, you know, image trace turns a nice smooth graphite line into a, a sort of broken digitized chunk here. But uh, for now, we'll just kind of take it for what it is. It's okay. And, uh, and now let's ungroup it and see if we can't eliminate some of these other drawings at the side. Right click and ungroup. Now, uh, image trace probably grouped it twice, so let's see if I can do one more ungroup and then click off using the move tool now. Let's see if I can start to move pieces around. I can. Uh, so be careful, right? There are a hundred thousand little tiny bits and pieces now that are in here, and some of them we will just click delete and remove. Some of them will surprise you because they're actually the white space of, uh, of all of the background, right? So I'll delete away the white space and then uh, kind of slowly start to pick this apart. Now this is, uh, this could be a pretty slow process for you, just kind of using the selection tool. Uh, but there are some helps, right? I like the lasso tool, particularly for getting into really sort of tight, difficult areas. Lasso tool allows me to just sort of completely draw a selection around something that might otherwise be difficult to get at. Uh, it also might allow me to completely select around my object and copy and paste it out of the design if that's easier for you guys to do. So I've pretty much cleared out all of the debris here, uh, but my, draw my drawing is still all broken into a tiny thousand little pieces, right? So I'm going to edit undo that. Instead of trying to break this drawing apart, I'm going to group it all back together. I'll select over the whole thing with the move tool and Command G is the keyboard shortcut for grouping. Now I've got sort of the beginning of being able to digitally color uh, this object. Uh, before we actually start to throw too much color into it, uh, let's actually go back to our Layers palette. If you don't have a Layers palette open, go to Window, Layers, and, uh, and take a look. I've got a few extra layers here that we'll just kind of ignore uh, the little sort of Layers 3, 4, but my drawing lives in Layer 2. Uh, if I turn layer 2 on and off with the little eyeball, I sort of, you know, hide my drawing or show or reveal my drawing. Uh, I can also lock my drawing by clicking the little lock icon there, and now I can't move that layer around. Uh, add a second layer. Uh, in this case, my layer 1 is hiding underneath already, but if you come down to the bottom of the layer palette and click Add New Layer, uh, it'll put a new layer into your document, and then you can move these layers around. Uh, I don't need that layer 5, but what you guys need is your drawing layer. My drawing is in layer 2, and in, in layer 1, which is physically underneath, I'm going to add a background. So I'll start by just sort of maybe adding a circular background. The keyboard shortcut L gives me my circle tool. And right now what I've drawn on top of my design is a white circle. Let's change white to something that's a little bit more visible. And for whatever reason, it came in as a grayscale image. Uh, to get my yellow circle to show up like a yellow circle, I'll go to my color palette. If you don't have your color palette open, go to Window, Color. And in my color palette, I have to click this little pancake stack in the upper right-hand corner and switch the uh, color, for that, uh, color for that shape to be RGB color. Now all the rest of my colors should come in just fine. Now, something kind of unique is happening here, right? I've got my... Uh, my background color, because it's in a layer that's underneath my drawing, is hiding underneath the black line work. This is pretty cool. Now, if I look carefully at my drawing, I actually have some white spaces that maintained. Um, those may start to cause some issues later, and I'll show you how to quickly and easily get rid of those. But maybe the most important thing is now starting to build out uh, color surfaces or panels inside of this drawing. Um, what I'll have to probably, uh, you know, teach you guys how to work with is the pen tool or the Bezier curve tool. I'll sort of lay one in here quickly with the pen tool just to show you how I'm going to draw in the shape. I'll switch the color slightly so it's kind of easier to see. And then use the anchor point conversion tool to bend that down. Well, how did I do that? Uh, 
before I come back to this design to show you how I'm going to bend and manipulate shapes in Illustrator, I might zoom out and take us to the other side of my document here where I've got some fairly simplistic shapes, uh, which were actually going to help us sort of understand how uh, the anchor points and the curve tools are going to work for us. So let's do this uh, exercise together. Let's start with a 5x5 five five inch rectangle. The rectangle tool is up here and one click of the rectangle tool will give me this little window here and I can just tell it make a 5x5 five five inch rectangle and it really doesn't matter you know what the dimensions here are uh, I'll just kind of simplify this rectangle down to a black stroke and no fill and because I'm going to use this six times I'll do a command uh, C just copy that rectangle and now let's do some modifications to this right when I click on my rectangle uh, with the uh, with the move tool, the selection tool, I see these little targets in the upper right hand corners. Grab one of those targets and just sort of pull it down and what you're noticing is that every corner that had one of these little targets visible and available to click on is now kind of bending dynamically. I could bend it all the way down to a circle if I really wanted to, but try one that's just a rounded edged or rounded cornered rectangle pretty straightforward. Try one of these again. Uh, this time, instead of rounding all of the corners, just make one click and select one corner at a time. And I'll pull one corner down and the opposite corner down. And I have a little bit more of a scalloped version, right? Uh, what we're starting to see is that each one of these squares, I'm going to put another one out there, Command V, paste. Each one of these squares is made up of individual anchor points. And those anchor points can be modified to uh, select and move around the whole shape, uh, use the black arrow key, the selection tool. To grab a hold of individual anchor points, we'll grab onto the white arrow key or the direct select tool. Uh, now, what we're gonna try next is a, uh, a sort of um, bending or curving these lines on the outside. And what we have to do is we have to kind of get acquainted with a set of tools that are hiding underneath the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a little bit more sophisticated. It gets kind of tricky. We'll learn it here in a second, but let's go all the way down to the anchor point tool. Uh, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut from here on out for that. And here it is right next to the tool, shift C. If I grab onto this top line and I pull it straight down holding shift, um, I can sort of have a lot of control over what that uh, over what that line looks like. If I don't hold shift, I can kind of bend it all over the place. I'm going to command Z those modifications. And I'm going to use uh, my smart guides. The keyboard shortcut for smart guides is command U. If I go to uh, view right here, my smart guides, I just turned them on, command U. And the smart guides are these purple lines that sort of flash up occasionally as I'm moving over my designs. And we're going to use those to our advantage here. Uh, I'm going to find the top center of my path. The path is the line in between my anchor points. I'm going to start pulling that down, holding shift, and stop right at the center intersection point. And do the same for the bottom. Do the same for the left. And last time on the right. What I want you guys to see is that using just some simple modification tools, we can start with something simple like a cube or a square and end up with something radically different. Uh, let's try just one more here by pulling straight down instead of stopping in the middle. We'll go all the way down to the opposite side. So intersection right smack dab in the middle come all the way down to the intersection at the bottom all the way over from the left to the right and vice versa So these sort of interesting patterns will kind of help me see that you've done some modifying to your shapes uh, one more, Command V. Now, instead of modifying or bending the shapes here, uh, I'm going to take a little bit closer look at how to modify individual anchor points. Keyboard shortcut A, right, uh, would allow me to select and modify individual points. Uh, but if I use the keyboard shortcut P, the pen tool, 
uh, and I hover over an existing path, you can see that the pen tool gives me a plus sign uh, right next to the pen. And that plus sign means that I'm going to add an anchor point to that existing path. And I can pull, you know, pull those down. So it allows me to do, you know, just a little bit more complex work uh, with my designs. The more anchor points I add, uh, the more complex polygon. Uh, it will be. Now let's just say I had to do some really complex uh, drawing and I didn't want to drop individual anchor points with the pen tool. The pen tool can be really great to drop uh, you know, individual points along the way, even join up along the way, even potentially right bend and manipulate shapes once I've built them. Uh, but sometimes it's just easier to say maybe draw it. Now the pen tool doesn't draw or at least it doesn't draw like the pen tool you're imagining uh, you know, in your art kits. Uh, instead, let's jump to a different tool. Uh, hiding underneath the pencil tool uh, is, or hiding underneath the, the shaper tool is the pencil tool. Keyboard shortcut for that is N. So say you have a really complex part of your design that you need to draw. Uh, the pencil tool will allow you to draw that thing and come all the way back to the beginning and it will have a little circle close to the end that allows you to sort of complete that complex shape. Uh, this is just going to be a little bit of proof to me, a little bit of help, so that you guys can sort of um, demonstrate and practice how to manipulate shapes on the fly. So let's come all the way back to my design now, uh, where I'm trying to, uh, trying to fill in color spaces. Um, this shape here was something kind of sort of triangular, uh, so I'm going to start with my pen tool, keyboard shortcut P, and I'll start dropping individual anchor points and I'll drop them in the rough shape of a triangle, come all the way back to the beginning until my pen tool has a circle right next to it saying, uh, you know, do you want to complete? Yes. And then shift C to modify that path, pull it down. And I can either pull on the path or I can pull on individual handles uh, to sort of make that path match more accurately. Uh, one of the nice things about, you know, doing some digital coloring in this way is that the black line work that we pulled in from our sketchbook is already, uh, you know, it's covering up some of my mistakes so I don't have to be super accurate uh, with where the, um, with where my lines are. Uh, now I'll add uh, one more sort of shape over here. I'll start with sort of a triangular shape and shift C, maybe bend uh, some of these lines to fit. And because uh, this was sort of a multifaceted shape. I'm going to kind of um, switch up my color just a little bit. Double click my fill option over in the toolbar and I'll make this side a bit lighter. And I'll switch back to this final side. Oops, I didn't quite put the anchor point in the right spot so I'll shift it over and stretch this one in the same way. So uh, this is pretty close uh, to, where, um, to where we want to be. Now I'm not uh, totally thrilled with the way that my colors are, are you know, the colors I chose are kind of garish. I think I like my other color scheme better, but I've got the basic ideas down. Now a couple of things I'd like to do to this, right? I'd like to completely eliminate all of the white space for that. So because my drawing is living in layer two, I'm going to lock out my colors so I don't accidentally move those around and, uh, and unlock layer two so I can get into my drawing. Now the drawing should all be grouped together and if I double click my drawing I know I get inside the group because everything gets sort of grayed out around the outside and uh, I'm inside the group uh, up here in the control bar I can see it and I want to grab everything that's white on the insider. I just want to tell the computer hey grab all of the white shapes. So I'll grab one that's, you know, sort of easy to get a hold of, this one here, by zooming in and out. Go up to Select, Same, Fill Color. And now it's grabbed everything that's white inside of that group. If I tap Delete, it sort of blows it all away. Double click into the white space and I jump back out of that group. Now that's pretty close uh, to, what, uh, to where we're going to land for this project at the end. Um, but here is how, uh, here's sort of a useful tip to sort of uh, work with colors in Illustrator. Instead of just kind of arbitrarily choosing colors like I did here, I'm going to grab uh, my rectangle tool. Keyboard shortcut for that is M. 
and I'm going to make myself a little color scheme here. I'm going to use the eyedropper, keyboard shortcut I, to sample the colors that I've already chosen here. And, uh, and my, color, uh, my color palette over here on the right hand side is going to be made up of the background color, the sort of dark green color. And I'll make two more boxes here for the two other colors that I chose. Use the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, to sample those colors. Okay, now that I see these colors over here on the side, I'm going, oh, those weren't very good at all. Uh, and then I've forgotten one color too because the black line work is part of my color scheme. I'll add a black line work. Now what I really should do is I should do some serious considering, like what would be the best color scheme to work with here. Um, we'll get into uh, to color schemes much later, uh, but I will suggest that you know keeping yourself within a uh, within a particular color family, uh, like blues or greens. Uh, the other thing that I might suggest is instead of using your solid black lines, uh, use just a darker color uh, to sort of deepen some of your lines. Um, that's, uh, that can make a huge difference uh, between the sort of the general feel of your work. The black lines feel really heavy. Uh, now, one of the things you'll notice is that if you pull your line work away, right, you reveal a sort of a sloppy conglomerate of trace shapes. Uh, but because of this sort of black key image or the inking that sits on top, uh, it can really hide a lot of the sort of looseness of your illustrations. Um, try one, try a design that has some nice curves in it. Try a design that maybe has some straight lines. Or if you're up for a bit of a challenge, uh, try a design that has a lot of complex facets hiding underneath. Uh, each one of those facets uh, would have been drawn out in, um, in our breaks and, uh, and stacks drawing assignment uh, and those are going to be some of the most fun uh, most fun to work with. I'm excited to see how you guys do this in the studio. Bring me your questions and your frustrations with it and we'll work it out. Take it easy guys.